Hi friends, welcome back. It's that time. It's time for another horror reboot. Reboot. Okay. I rewatched the original 1987 Hellraiser last night and never disappoints. Except for the ending is like very interesting, the whole dragon thing, but um absolutely love that film. It just reignited my love for the original story and today we're going to check out the brand new Hellraiser. 2022. This is a take on Clive Barker's original classic where a young woman struggling with addiction comes into possession of a ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites. A few reasons I'm really excited about this. Uh, it did premiere just in September um, at a film festival and people said it's pretty good, it's pretty solid, which is very rare for a film like this because there's so much uh, like effects and I guess fantastical elements involved. It could be actually be really hard to get this right, but while re-watching the original Hellraiser last night, I noticed the Cenobites are probably in it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so it'll be interesting how much they incorporate them. But uh, the big new change is obviously with Pinhead, whose official name isn't Pinhead, but that's what us fans like to call them uh, and this time they're coming back female presenting which does make sense because the book that you know Hellraiser the original is based on says that the Cenobites are androgynous so should be interesting but what I like is that Doug Bradley who played the original Pinhead or the priest was blown away by Jamie Clayton who plays the new Pinhead um, just with the design and the way it all came together so I mean that is Big props. And another thing that gives me a little bit of hope is that David Bruckner is directing this and he did The Ritual and The Night House. So we're gonna find out today what wonders this new Hellraiser holds and hopefully it's not a waste of good suffering. I'm gonna let you know whether it's worth your time. You can watch along with me, but this will stay spoiler free and it is streaming right now on Hulu in America. So I'll let you know whether it's worth seeking it out or whether you should just give it a skip. Maybe wait a little bit. There's a lot coming out today. So much content coming out today on the 7th. So I'll let you know whether it's a must see this weekend or if it can wait and be put on the back burner. And yes, I will be doing this in my new merch, which is my Come Chill With Me shirt. If you have not checked out my merch, I just launched it last week and I do have a official uniform for chilling with me. So if you'd like to come chill with me officially, you can go to spookyastronauts.com and check out all of the cool gear. But there is a movie to be watched. There is a review to be done and I need to see if Hellraiser is worth your time. Let's go check it out. I'm so excited, a little bit nervous. I'm going in strong, let's go. mind that at all. Uh, very different, very different, very different, but impressive in a strange way. It felt like I just watched a Cronenberg film in a weird way. So the film is about Riley who's a recovering addict and I thought maybe it had a lot more to do with her addiction but I mean it does play into some of the dynamics between her and another character um, but it's more of like a metaphor as well. Uh, which is really interesting when you take a step back at the end. But she has this opportunity to break into a shipping yard and steal something out of the safe, which happens to be the puzzle box. And you know, from there, her life just turns to absolute hell, no pun intended. And she is determined to try and find the source of this box, find out what it is and where it came from. And it's more of like an investigation as well, which is really interesting. Uh, I just want to say straight off the bat, if you're thinking about re-watching the first one before watching this, it isn't necessary. Um, not that you shouldn't re-watch Hellraiser every opportunity you can, uh, but it just is not connected at all. Um, and this story is very different. So in the original, it's more of like this weird family dynamic. I don't know if you remember. It's about a girl and her 
father whose uh, wife, like so her stepmom, um, is cheating. And it's, it's like a whole confusing story where this one, it's more about the origins of the cube or the puzzle box. And the set of bites are at the center of it all. Um, and it's really well explained the origins for all of it. And even if you have questions about what's going on during the film, because it is quite a journey um, and it's very epic, uh, it is all really well explained. Where in the original, it's kind of like, this thing is from hell or somewhere, um, figure it out. <laughs> I, I know obviously it progresses as the series goes on. I thought this might be a remake of that initial story just with a few changes, kind of like Pet Cemetery, or within the same realm, um, like a sequel, like a Halloween sequel, you know, like years later, um, because it all could have happened within the same universe, if you know what I mean. Um, but because of the different looks of the set of bites and the strict rules they've put around them in this one, um, it's a little bit different. One thing that I thought was really interesting about this is Riley, the main character. I thought she was really unlikable, but I've gone through this journey with a lot of films recently thinking about whether unlikable characters are my thing or if they're not. And I think that characters are fine to be unlikable as long as they're interesting and Riley is that. Um, it was really interesting seeing her make mistakes or you know, deciding on certain things um, because you weren't sure where she was gonna go and she was uh, quite a dynamic character. So I enjoyed that about her. I wanna talk about the cinematography and just the way the set design really, the way it was put together before we get onto the Cenobites, which are really part of like the set design because of the cost Costuming. It's just insane. But first, the cinematography, um, absolutely beautiful, uh, really dark. And that's why it felt almost Cronenberg because it feels like um, with some of the props that come to play, um, they're just like in this dark space. And it really feels like this film is so much more of a sci-fi than the original. It's like a gritty steampunk sci-fi, but in modern times. So I guess that's why it reminded me of like modern Cronenberg, which is a little bit scary, but I swear it's not like that. Um, you know what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it has some really interesting camera movements, especially I guess this, it's like a bookend kind of film where the first shot um, is kind of mimicked in a certain way towards the end. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And just the whole way it looks with the sci-fi, it just is, you think it's epic and then it just gets more and more epic. And I feel like this wouldn't work for people who don't like science fiction because it's really out there. And to go with that, the music is really interesting. Uh, although they have like this kind of classic score that's in these kinds of horror movies, they also have these like really interesting scenes with this immense bass that feels unnerving and like you're not meant to be there. And I know maybe that's just me. I don't want to go anywhere where there's a lot of bass, <laughs> but uh, it just felt uh, very off-putting and um, it was a really nice way they could tie like modern kind of music into this classic you know what would be an 80s horror movie kind of feel um so i really liked that the whole pairing together but also when they have these epic scores it goes along with these i, I know i keep saying sci-fi but it really does feel like that it, it just goes along with these epic moments and these like really broad and wide shots of things that cannot be explained. <laughs> and that's what we need to talk about. We need to talk about like the set design. It is absolutely stunning um, and everything kind of weaves into each other. And it's just this very intense theme um, that is played out in all aspects. And I really enjoyed that they just like went for it with this, which is exactly what they did with the storyline. They weren't just trying to shock the viewer. They really wanted to make everything make sense. And I felt like that was mimicked in the way the set design, the way everything was put together. Even if you have questions about what you're seeing, it is greatly explained. And um, it's really just, it's it's epic. It's super epic. Um, and then of course we've got the costumes and I have to say Pinhead or the priest is fucking amazing, so amazing. And um, I'm kind of kicking myself for saying like female presenting before because this is like a true androgynous um, pinhead and just this, the voice killed me. The voice, wait, wait. If you haven't heard the voice yet, the voice killed me. It was stunning, scary and captivating all at the same time. And that goes with all of the Cenobites. They were just really fascinating and very different. And the level of detail is, phenomenal. Um, and I guess then from there, that definitely plays into the gore. So this film starts off giving you like a couple of drops, literally of uh, gore, and then it just like goes full out and it's, it's pretty intense um, and always enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I just, 
they just did that really well. Although I will say it does feel like it was kind of made for the small screen in some ways. The opening scenes, uh, it, they feel a little bit different to the core story, just the way they look um, and the way they're structured. It's kind of like you get this story before the main story kicks in and the main story is a little bit more realism down to earth and what we're used to. So do just take a breath, take a pause and know that more is to come. Overall, I just had a really good time watching this. The sun did go down by the way. Um, I have my lights set up when I film, but don't worry. I know it was like a little bit light before. Some people freak out that I watch it during the day, but I was like timing it with the sunset and it was just, I know I keep saying epic, but it's really epic. But in a weird way, I do kind of feel like it is more suited to the at home theater or your TV because um, as beautiful and um, well done as all of the gore and the costumes and everything were, um, I, f I just feel like it's not as polished as what you would normally see in the cinema. And um, yeah, so I I'm glad that they released it to streaming. But I think it's well worth your time and uh, it just know that it's very different to the original. It's kind of like its own take, which is what it claimed to be in the blurb. But what I really like about this is Sometimes you watch horror movies that are remakes and you wonder why they even took the same name. Why do we even bother calling it that name when we could just make a whole new entity and make it its own thing? But this one does really play into the core ideas of the Hellbound Heart. Uh, so I do think it earns the Hellraiser name. It's not anything like the original, but it just opened up and um, just the blood and the gore and the guts and the Cenobites were just was really interesting and creepy. I wouldn't say it's so scary as much as it's creepy and disgusting. And that's what I expect out of Hellraiser. So I'm gonna give this one a personal score of seven out of 10. I really enjoyed this experience. And I think a lot of you will too. I think it's pretty, it's, I think it's all right. I think it's okay. Um, and I just love how well explained everything is. It's kind of like an easy watch if you're a gore hound. I always feel weird saying that it's easy to watch people being torn apart, you know? And for originality, I'm gonna give it a four out of 10. We've seen this a lot in the other Hellraisers, but to this scale, I think that they went all out and they really wanted to make a mark with this one. And I think they did. Um, and for scare score, I'm gonna give it a five just for the gore, but it's it's not really a scary movie. Um, it's just really gory. I would not, when I say it's not a scary movie, that doesn't mean show your children. Do not show your children anything I talk about. <laughs> That's your, you're, you're the parent, I'm the person just here being a weirdo and watching this movie on a Friday night. But I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, don't forget my merch is live if you'd like to go check it out. Um, and I will see you very soon. I gave you three videos this week because, you know, it's October and there's just so much content out. So I hope just like me, a lot of you are watching it at home and I do think this one Hellraiser is worth watching this weekend. Let me know what you thought down below. I can't wait to see and let me know what your scores were as well. I'd love to see them and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends.